I would say the self is an illusion. As it will turn out, nobody ever was or had a self. It makes no neuroanatomical sense. There's no place in the brain for your ego to be hiding. You do not exist. Sorry. Despite all the plans you've made, and all the nice clothes you've bought, and all of that, you don't exist. It was all for nothing. You're in empty suits, right? Just like all the rest of them. I'm not arguing that consciousness is a reality beyond science or beyond the brain or, or that, that it's, it floats free of the brain at death. I'm not, I'm not making any spooky claims about its, its metaphysics. Uh, what I am saying, however, is that uh, the self is an illusion, the sense of being an ego, an I, a thinker of thoughts in addition to the thoughts, a, a, an experiencer in addition to the experience, that the sense that we all have of riding around inside our heads as a uh, kind of a passenger in the vehicle of the body. That's, that's where most people start when they, when they think about any of these questions. But most people don't feel identical to their bodies. They feel like they have bodies. They feel like they're inside the body. And most people feel like they're inside their heads. Uh, now that sense of being a subject, a locus of consciousness inside the head, is an illusion. We have a changing system. We are a process. And there's not one unitary self that's carried through from one moment to the next, unchanging. And yet we feel that, that we have this, this self that's just this kind of center of experience. Now it's possible, I claim, and people have claimed for thousands of years, to lose this feeling, to actually have the center drop out of experience. You can just be identical to this sphere of experience that, that is all of the color and light and feeling and energy of consciousness, but there's no sense of center. So, so this is classically described as self-transcendence or ego transcendence in, in spiritual, mystical, new age, religious literature. It's a real experience. It's clearly an experience that people can have. It just so happens that this experience of self-transcendence does link up with what we know about the mind through neuroscience. If you lose your sense of a unitary self, if you lose your sense that there's a permanent, unchanging center to consciousness, your experience of the world actually becomes more faithful to the facts. So I would like to ask you now, just for a moment, to be conscious and see what is it like to be me now? Right. I suggest many of you will have, have dropped out of this feeling, but you can probably drop back into it. Most people in the world, I think, do feel something like this. It's very natural. It seems to be the way that we're, we're built. That we feel as, oh, there's my foot. That's my foot. That's my knee. That's my tummy. And I'm in here looking at them when I look. They said, I'm up here and I'm looking at my foot. And I'm over here and you're out there. That's a kind of natural way that we feel about ourselves. But of course it's rubbish. We may give up Cartesian dualism, we may be absolutely sure that there isn't mind stuff and physical stuff or matter and consciousness. We, we, know, we, we, we say we're monists, but actually we still believe in a kind of experiencing self. The experiencer and the experience. This is just, it doesn't fit with what we know about how the brain works at all. The feeling that I am having a stream of experiences is so compelling 
that we keep getting back into it. But it makes no sense at all in terms of what's going on in the brain. The self is not a thing, but a process. It is a very interesting and fascinating process. It is, it is that special process that gives you the conscious experience of being someone. There is no such thing as a self, but there is some process that creates the very robust experience of being someone. It feels this way, but it really isn't. Oh, here I am. Seems to be me, seems to be one me. One me in charge of this body. Unified, continuous. It seems to be that it was me a few minutes ago and before that it was me and the little girl and so on, that there was something continuous about the me's generated by this brain and this body. We have thoughts about an action, say, the action happens, there's a correlation, they're in that order. We jump to the conclusion that one caused the other. But we can tell from what's going on in the brain that it isn't like that at all. Indeed, uh, we know so much now about the mechanisms of, of, of self-control, uh, of decision-making, of uh, choices and so on, and where they're happening in frontal cortex, prefrontal cortex, and so on, again distributed and so on, that the idea of there being a me who initiates actions is just bonkers, but, but it still feels that way. Let's say I sit in meditation and look for myself. I look for the person who's looking, and what do I find? I find the world. I don't find myself as I thought it was. I don't find a consistent uh, experiencer of the experiences. By the way, are you conscious now? Well, now, there's a very, very interesting thing about this question. Normally, Basically, if you ask, am I conscious now, the answer is always yes. Did any of you get the odd sensation when I asked you, are you conscious now, of sort of, ooh, kind of become, yeah? It's like, oh, you're becoming conscious because I've asked you. Yeah? Something like that. Now, this can be very puzzling because you think to yourself, well, of course I was conscious before. But then something happened that was different. What changed? It felt like I was becoming conscious, but does that mean I wasn't conscious before? That, that, that peculiar thing that you experienced and a few other people did led me to the second question. What was I conscious of a moment ago? I would like you would all to ask yourself that question now. What was I conscious of a moment ago? Now, the obvious thought would be I was conscious of the words coming out of my mouth because surely I must have been thinking about them because giving a lecture, you know, it's quite, you need a bit of attention. But I can hear that humming noise over there as though somebody's been listening. And hang on, I was sort of faintly aware of a man nodding over there. I'd forgot, I wouldn't have, you know, if I hadn't asked myself the question, I would have, that would have gone. But it sort of feels as though well, there was somebody listening to that noise over there, but it wasn't me because I was concentrating on what I was saying. I hadn't even noticed there's a great drilling going on in the road. <laughs> but when I asked that question, it's as though somebody was listening to the drilling. Who was it? Now, this is where, that's the experience, okay? But I'm now jumping to an intellectual interpretation of the experience that might be wrong. It's always dangerous to do that. What I'm thinking is something like this. Most of the time, 
most of our lives, most of the time, what's happening is what you'd expect in a complex brain, in a complex body, in a complex world. There's multiple parallel streams going along, and none of them is in consciousness or out of consciousness. None of them is what I am experiencing or I'm not experiencing. They're all just going along, some bigger than others. Some, maybe there are selves. Maybe this one, there's a kind of a bit of a self-construct going along, and we know where these self-constructs are made in the um, in the uh, uh, temporoparietal junction is the, the body image made and so on. So we can you know, track those things if we wanted to. Um, but what I'm suggesting is there might even be two in parallel. There might be several in parallel. The coming and going, shifting. You know. But then, da-da! You ask the question, am I conscious now? Or any question you like that, that propels you into mindfulness. Um, and then what happens? All the rest kind of blah, blah, blah. And they're all brought together. And you go, oh, here I am. And that's fine. But you make the mistake, this is where the delusion comes about, of going, and I was conscious before, and I've been conscious all day. I submit that you haven't. And every time this happens, which will be many, many times a day if you're practicing something like mindfulness and falling out of mindfulness, um, then if you keep popping back into it, you think it's the same self. What happened in the last half an hour or so? There was a me, because I could be got quite nervous because there was a problem with wires. And I'm thinking, mm -hmm. there's a me, fall away. And there's another one. And then there's another one. And then there's a whole distracted gap with a whole lot of things going, oh, and here I am again. Ah! But I'm not, this thing here is not conned into thinking it's the same me. Partly because of the science and partly because of the personal inquiry, I say that wasn't the same me. And looking forward into the future, it won't be the same me either. In a few minutes, I'll be, oh, no, in a few minutes, I'll be answering your questions, I hope. And should a me pop up and a sensation of I'm over here and you're over there and I'm going to answer the questions, that will be a new me. She won't be me, this one. You do not exist. And this is so difficult to take in because it means giving up the romantic ideal that you're going to achieve something. And there is nobody doing anything. And all of that is an illusion because you don't decide anything. It's decided for you. What all the mind does is rationalize something that has happened. Something happens and then, ah, okay, I did that because, you know, and you make up some discourse about why you did it. But that's not why it happened. We really don't decide anything and we don't do anything. All of that is a myth. So give yourself permission to grok the fact that you don't exist and therefore will never achieve anything in life. What would it be like, do a, a thought experiment with me now, what would it be like to let go of all of those narratives, all of them? No desire, not even the highest desire of liberation. No fear, what can happen to you, you're already gone. Never work. Would it be okay to live in this state? Or would it be unbearable? Is it liberation or is it the worst loss conceivable? 